This video is sponsored by Skillshare. If you remember to avoid this one mistake, then you're gonna have a smoother printing experience. Hello and welcome, brawlers. I see the same mistakes being made over and over in my Discord on the 3D Printed Health channel. So I thought I would make this video to impart all of my wisdom onto you so you don't have to go through the same pain and make the same mistake. Like building a house, you need to have good foundations and that starts with the machine itself. So you need to actually make sure that your printer itself is level or as level as it can be. I place all of my 3D printers on top of this plastic IKEA shoe rack thing. It's quite cheap and it does the job very well. I do it because I want to make sure that if there's any like major leaks or spills, that it's at least gonna be contained and it's not gonna go all over the place. But it has all of these small raised bumps on it. And whenever I got my Saturn, I kept getting failures when realistically I shouldn't be getting any at all. I had leveled the bed many times and I checked all my settings and they were all correct. Until one moment I just decided, well, let me just check the machine itself. And I noticed if I pushed down on one end, it could actually rock backward and forward. I didn't change anything else apart from moving it down to make it level and straight away, all of my failures disappeared. So you've heard time and time again about making sure that your plate bed is level. This is the most common mistake that I see and it's an easily fixed one, but it's also easy to mess up as well. So for a majority of the printers, the process is pretty much the same. I'm gonna use in this case, the Frozen Sonic Mighty 4K. What I do with all of my printers is whenever I'm going to level, you have to make sure that those bolts on top of the plate are loose so that the plate is, can move around freely. Next, what I do is get an A4 piece of printing paper and line it up with the black tape that goes around the screen. And then you press your home button for your printer or your leveling button, whichever one it has. Once it gets down and settles down, this is probably where most of the mistakes are made. Now you need to apply firm, even pressure on the plate. While applying pressure to the plate, tighten up the first bolt, and then I always go to the opposite corner and tighten that up, and then move my way around. You wanna make sure that these bolts are tight, and I mean that you can't move them. And while we're talking about the plate, another mistake that isn't actually your fault is that the plate itself might not be level or there might not be good bed adhesion. The major telltale sign of this is actually a raft just peeling away from the plate. Now, both of these issues can be fixed with using some sandpaper. So you can use 120 grit and then move down to 80 grit just to give it a bit of a rough texture. This also applies to flex plates or magnetic plates. So before I move on to some really costly mistakes that you can make, I wanna talk about this week's sponsor, Skillshare. I'm a very goal focused person and one of my main goals is to make better YouTube videos consistently every week. But I have problems with time management and I need to learn the skills how to actually make better videos. I recently took a few courses on filmmaking and storytelling as well as one on using an app called Notion. The Notion Masterclass Maximize Your Productivity and Organization by Ali Abdal was a real eye-opener for me because I've been using Notion as a notekeeper and didn't realize how much it could help with my day-to-day. -day. Traditional jobs are not a one-size-fits-all, so learn how to design a career that fits you. I want to make YouTube my full-time job and Skillshare can help learn what it takes to break into a creative industry by taking classes to find your creative voice and style. The first thousand people to use my link down below will get one month free on Skillshare. Since I've started using it, I find that I'm actually watching it more than YouTube and I'm learning new skills and I'm learning them quicker as well. So the next mistake that I see people making a lot is not tightening up the screws completely. So this can be on the fat itself or even on the plate. Now on the fat, you wanna make sure that those screws are tight as possible. Now I did make this mistake personally because I came back after a five hour print and my fat was at the very top of my printer and it looked like it was about to fall at any moment. What an absolute nightmare. One of the biggest costly mistakes that I've personally made is not using enough resin. I have a Warhound Titan up there and I also have a Warhound Titan body in there. You might ask, why have I got a body and not another Warhound? Well, it's because I didn't put in enough resin. The worst mistake that you could possibly make is not wearing the right protective equipment. You need to use nitro gloves. Nitro gloves are the one glove that protects you against 
the IPA and the resin. It doesn't eat into it. And I also personally wear long sleeve while I'm touching anything to do with the fat or the printer itself. So after every print, you need to check the fat and you can do this with either a gloved finger or a spatula. I use a spatula personally just because while I'm checking it, I can also stir the resin as well, which is another mistake that I see people doing and they're not stirring the resin after each print. You need to make sure that it's stirred up and that it's at the right temperature, because if not, then you could be left with some weird looking consistencies in your print and even in the fat itself. Here's one whenever I had mixed two resins and it just didn't work out whatsoever. Not curing and washing the model properly. So whenever you wash the model, even if you're using water washable resin, I still advise you to use IPA or I've even been recently using methylated spirits or denatured alcohol for Americans. So you wanna make sure that you're cleaning the models properly. So if you, I normally leave them in for about three to five minutes and I'll agitate it as well. I'll stir it around with my gloved hand. Once I'm pretty sure that they're washed, I'll take them out, take off your supports and then I'd let it try for hours. Now some people will use like a fan to try and speed it up. But honestly for me, just let it try air try for a couple of hours and then you can then cure it. Now you wanna make sure that your model is properly cleaned before you cure it. And that's because if it isn't, you could be left with this like tacky residue that's on the model and it means that your paint won't stick to it. And you also want to leave it to air try or, or try completely before you cure it because if you don't, then that can lead to white crystals. Not using the right supports is also a really big mistake that I see people make and it's quite obvious to see whenever you see the pictures because the raft is there, the supports are there, but the model isn't. So most of the time, you wanna make sure that the heavy supports are on the base of the model or places of the model that you're not gonna be able to see. And for the rest of the model, you'll want to add in a lot of light supports or a lot of medium supports if you can get away with the scarring. I always use Lychee Island Detector and I also use UV tools as well, just as a wee safety net because it goes down to the very pixel and tries to find islands there. Don't trust pre-supports. The only pre-supports that I could stand by are the Maker's Cult. They always work for me and I actually use them whenever I get a new printer just to test it out to make sure that I've got the, the settings right after calibrating it. And that brings me on to the next point, which is calibrating your machine. Make sure you're using the correct settings. It only takes a short while to actually calibrate the machine. It's anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour, depending on what settings you're trying to go for. But you'll wanna get the optimal settings for your resin and your printer. And that means if you change resin, then you're gonna to have to do it again. You also want to make sure that you try and keep your temperatures around your printer or around your resin as consistent as possible. And if you're like me and you live in the UK and it's been very cold this week, then you'll want to possibly bump up your exposure time by 0.2 to 0.5 seconds and also lower your lift speed down to 40. That also can come into effect if you just feel like if you're getting too many failures on models that shouldn't really be failing. Also, don't trust community profiles on Lightshade. There's so many times whenever I open it up and it tells me that I should use these settings for my Saturn. And I just know looking at them, it won't work because I've already, I've already calibrated mine. I know what works. If you remember to avoid this one mistake, then you're gonna have a smoother printing experience. Lift your fat off once in a while. Now recently I was testing the printer and I noticed that the middle of the plate just wasn't printing. The plate was level, the, the actual plate itself was level, I'd sanded it. And it just didn't make any sense because the print before worked and I just reprinted off the same plate. I lifted off the fat and I noticed that there was a micro tear in the FEP foam and resin had got onto the screen. Slow down and double check your sliced file. Now, I didn't do this because in the last couple of weeks, I've been a bit hectic trying to get a lot of different projects going all at the same time. I recently printed off a custodian's leg and I was looking at it going, why is there so many supports and why does it look taller than the rest of the legs? I ended up having two legs stacked on top of each other. So I have this four legged custodian's abomination that possibly should be in the warp. And if there is any mistakes that you think I've missed then let me know in the comments below, but also consider becoming a Patreon or a YouTube member so you can join the Discord and you can actually ask people in real time, hey, listen, I've got this problem. 
how can I fix it? There's so many helpful people on the Discord and it's possibly the best Discord in the universe. I wanna thank all of my Patreon and YouTube members because without you guys, I wouldn't be able to do this. And like you've seen in the Discord, there's some big projects coming up. So all the support helps. Thanks very much.